Hey guys, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. How do you parse JSON data with Wally? How to extract the different fields? When to decide whether you need a JSON object or a JSON array? How to process a JSON array? All these questions are going to be answered in this video. I have made some changes to the code. Inside our extras package, I have added a class called URL endpoints. Here, I have the URL for the box office data. Other than that, I have variables for characters like question mark, ampersand, and then there are URL parameters that we need like API key and limit. If you go back to our fragment box office, the method get request URL where we have specified a limit has been modified appropriately. Here I have constructed from the URL of the box office, added the question mark character and then added the API key and the ampersand and then the parameter for limit. Also inside my own create, I have called this method called send JSON request here. I simply construct the JSON request and add it to our request queue. Inside our fragment box office class, we have the method called send JSON request. Inside that, we have the onResponse method where we get our JSON object response. I've written a method called parse JSON response. If we take a look at that method, I've simply taken the JSON object. I've checked if the response is null or the response.length is zero. In this case, length means the number of name value mappings that may exist within that JSON object. If there is nothing inside, it's going to give you zero. In that case, I've simply said return, which means don't do any further processing. Now also inside our extras package, I've created an interface called keys. Now within this interface, there is one more interface called endpoint box office, where I have all the keys that are needed by us for JSON parsing. In other words, there are these values. You see, there's ID, there's movies, there's title, there's year. These values have been stored nicely inside these key variables here and I'm going to use these variables while we parse JSON. If you take a look at our JSON feed, it starts with an object and inside that the first thing that we have is an array which is a JSON array called movies. If you go all the way to the bottom of this page, you will notice that we have one more object after the array after the closing of the curly brace which is called links here. Now this object contains two properties self and alternate. We will see if we need to process this later. But first, let's start by processing our JSON array with the name movies. So going back to code, all we got to do now is say response dot get JSON array. And here we need to pass the text movies. But for that, we have already made our keys interface where we have this key movies with that same value. So we can use this here by simply saying get so there you go, keys dot endpoint box office dot key movies, and then that gives us a JSON array object. At this point, there is an error here. It says unhandled exception or dot JSON dot JSON exception. Let's take a look at why this may arise. So going to the documentation of the get JSON array method, it says it throws a JSON exception if the mapping doesn't exist or is not a JSON array. So we need to make sure that we handle the case when there is no mapping or when the array is not found. As we start processing several keys, I have added a try catch exception over here to ensure that all the exceptions come at one point. Now here, if you say, take a look at the way we have written the key here by saying keys or endpoint, this is going to get very messy as we go further. So let's cut this using static imports. So at the top of my code at the import statement, I simply said import static and I have given the interface and the sub interface dot star here to import all the static fields within that interface. So going to the bottom here, I don't need the statement anymore where I say keys or endpoints, blah, blah, blah. I can just remove that and that can directly work. Now this makes our code look much cleaner. The JSON object class has a method called has where we can pass a key and check if that key exists. In other words, the documentation says returns true if this object has a mapping for name. Now the mapping may be null. Now this means that the value of that mapping may be null, but all you need to check with this method has is whether the key exists or not. We can do that as well inside our code. But in any case, you have to handle a catch exception for the JSON exception out here. As the name says, it's an array. Use a for loop to loop through the different elements of the array. If you go back to our JSON feed, here I have compressed all the unwanted items by folding them off. The square bracket starts here and ends here and these are all the items at each position within that JSON array. Now each of these items is actually a JSON object because it starts at a curly brace and it ends at a curly brace before the next item begins. So the first thing that we need to do is go here inside our for loop and say get JSON object at position i. 
the way we do that is simply saying array movies dot get json object at the position i and we can store that inside a json object so this single json object now represents this entire curly brace from this point all the way to this point now within this json object we need to extract the data like id title and so on so the way we do that is pretty similar to what we previously did for the id we can simply say json object that is our current movie dot get json string to see if our effort so far was successful what i'm going to do is print all the ids for that i construct a string builder at the top and inside our for loop i take the current id and i append that to our string builder object and a new line so at this point when we run the app we display a toast here and we see all the ids coming one below the other in a new line inside our main activity let's take a look at that so now i start my main activity here in both places and take a look at that bam there is our json id list that is working perfectly so let's process the other fields and get data from them as well the title of your movie can be extracted pretty much the same way by calling get string let's go to the next field which is release dates now within this you will notice that we have curly brace opening here and closing here which means the key release dates actually points to a json object if you expand this you will notice that it has a single property called theater where we have our actual release date which we need and for this we need to process it twice in other words first we need to get the json object by the name release dates and then from that json object we need to get the theater property out there so let's do it so we can go back here and we can say current movie dot get json object pass the key release dates here which we have already constructed inside the interface and assign this to a json object called object release dates now we simply check whether this object release dates has a key called theater and we extract the value if it contains that key so we simply go back here and now we can say so the value for the release date currently is in the form of a string so i'll simply keep it outside by saying string release date and i'll assign the value of null over here now if the key already has a proper value then we can go here and say release date equals to object release date which is our json object dot get string if it doesn't have it we can assign a standard value like na indicating that the release date is not available for this movie the next piece of information we need is pretty similar in nature the key is ratings and as you can see it starts with a curly brace and ends with a curly brace indicating that it contains a json object if you expand this object you will notice that it has four properties out of which we need the audience score which goes to 70 which is a json integer so let's go ahead and process it the same way so now in our current movie object we need to extract the ratings data as you can see it starts with a curly brace and ends with one indicating that it is a json object so we can go here to our code and we can directly say json object object ratings is current movie dot get json object and pass the key that you need here now in this case if you open this object you can see that it's a property called audience score whose value we need now this 70 is a json integer json supports data types as i discussed in my what is json video so going back here to our code we are going to simply check if the object ratings has the key called audience score if it has the key i'm going to call get int over here and that's going to be assigned to this variable called audience score which i have simply defined as zero at the top here in other words when there is no rating available then it's going to be zero by default which is not such a nice strategy there should be probably a message saying an a in our case if you go at the top all the way the id also has been changed you see the id looks something like this 7713 blah 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 if you go everywhere to the other movies you're going to see a similar id for them as well now i believe this value can be represented with the help of a long in your code so you can go down here to android studio and we can say current movie dot get long key id and that's going to work just the way it did so in other words i changed it from get string to get long since json supports data types the next thing i did was to extract the value for our key synopsis which is pretty similar to what we did so far by saying get string and passing the key synopsis here now i also thought about something and it was the audience score initially i gave it a zero value but that doesn't make sense because if no one rates the movie then it gives a rating of zero by default or if the movie is too bad it gives a rating of zero by default but if we give minus one it simply means that the rating is not available and we can process it in a different way and hence i have assigned the initial value of minus one for the audience score the next thing that we would be interested in in fact the last thing 
is the posters. Now this contains four different URLs. If you take a look at these files, they are the same file in four different places. And I saw several other movie results and they all had the same file, which means Rotten Tomatoes doesn't actually have different images currently at the time of making this video for different parts of the image. So what we are going to do is extract the thumbnail feature out of this. For that, we are going to need a JSON object because as you can see, it starts with a curly brace and ends with one here. So getting a thumbnail is again pretty similar. Get the JSON object called posters. From that, find out if there is a key called thumbnail. If yes, get its value. And that's exactly what I have done here by having our if clause over here. Now, one or more of these values may be null. Hence, we need to make sure that we consider this while populating our recycler view. So for now, we can just construct our movie object and pass all these details inside or call setter methods on that movie object to set these values. The parse JSON response method may add more keys for parsing as the need or requirement arises. Going back to our movie class, I have formatted and nicely arranged everything here. There's a separate constructor called movie where we pass all the details here. Remember, for now, we don't have the URL self or URL cast or the other values that you see, but I may add them, like I said, in the JSON feed. So going down further, you can go all the way down and there's a two string method, which I'll be using shortly to print out the details of this movie. So going back to fragment box office, all we can do now is construct an array list at the top that contains movie objects. And we are going to initialize this array list by adding a new movie object for every movie that we recover from the JSON feed. So we can go down simply inside our parse JSON response and inside the for loop we can add our new movie object. Now there are two ways you can initialize this movie object either by using the constructor that I specially created here for specifying all the values or we can use the setter methods that exist out there. I'll be using the setter methods to set information for different fields in the movie. The problem comes when we talk about setting the release date. If you remember, we have taken that inside a variable of type string. Inside our movie class, what we actually have is a type date. So how do we convert that? And first, do we actually need this? We can simply say string release date here and that would simplify the whole thing. But the reason why we are using a date class is so that we can later extract information like days or months or years and we can probably sort results based on the movies released this month or last month or the last 10 days. So that, that kind of control is very hard to achieve and parse with the help of strings out here. So first thing that we need to do is convert our string which is release date to a date object and that can be done because we have a specific format for this date. You see this is year, month, then day. So we can use a simple date format and we can do this easily. We can go at the top here and make our variable for formatting a date by calling private date format. So the simple date format object is going to take a constructor which is going to have a string specifying the format of how the date will actually appear. In our case, you can see that there are going to be four characters that are a year. Then there is a dash and then there is two of them, which is basically the month. Again a dash and two of them basically the date. So we can write that by saying y y y y for the year and put a dash say mm for the month and then put a dash and say dd for our date. Careful with this mm. If you write a small m here it goes and considers that a minute instead of a month. You can see more examples of date formatting if you just google it out. I'll be covering that in my java videos if possible. So going down here we can simply use that date format which we constructed at the top to convert it into appropriate date object. Use our simple date format object, call the parse method on it, pass the normal string that you want to parse. In our case, that would be release date. Now, this would give you a date object. We can simply construct that date object here by simply saying date object date or simply saying date date here. Now, we need to make sure that there is an exception that is handled when you write this statement, and that is our parse exception. So, I have added a cat statement for that as well if the date is in an improper way and the date formatting or parsing fails. So all we need to do now is pass this date object inside and that takes care of setting our current date. So at this point we have done everything. We have set all the values. The only thing that we need to do is add this movie object to our array list which is at the top called list movies. Now inside our for loop we can simply add it by saying list movies dot add movie object. So at this point we have all the data that we need. We can simply display this because we have already defined a two string method for our movie class at the bottom and it's going to give us a nice representation of how everything looks. 
The only thing I do now is go outside our for loop and call L dot capital T. If you take a look at that method which is inside the log class, I have simply made a toast with a longer duration. So I'm going to go back to the box office and display that array list, list movies and convert that to a string and display it. At this point, let's try to see what happens when we run it on lollipop and the pre lollipop devices. Start main activity at both the places and bam, take a look at that. There is our data coming up with a long toast. Everything is nicely formatted as you can see as per the two string method which we defined inside our movie object. So this completes how you can parse JSON to show data. But this is not enough because we need to display this data inside a recycler view. In this video, I have shown you how to parse JSON data using Wally. But in the next video, I'll show you how to put this data inside a recycler view. How to save the data when you rotate the fragment with its on save instance state. What can you do to make it parcelable and so on. In the meantime, if you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.